don't give up what you want most for what you want now. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Mills and Ruel. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and Ababa Ball. Back at it with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, Baha Shem, Ba in Ha the Shem name. Yahweh Shai being the name of the begotten Son, meaning He delivers, He saves, Rachakwadash, Holy Spirit, double honors. All right, uh, to our elders and apostles once again, okay, and to Wadi Yabash Mashai for putting the Spirit on me to do this lesson. So I wanted to go ahead and touch on this quote by Richard G. Scott Don't give up what you want most for what you want now. Okay? And ultimately, in a spiritual sense, don't give up on this truth for the present moment. In this truth, you have to have a long-term delayed gratification mindset. Okay, when I mean, what do I mean by long-term delayed gratification? In this truth, it's all about prioritizing the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, prioritizing the Lord, putting the Lord first before everything, including our own selves. And with that, you get the blessings and the re reap the rewards and the benefits that Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh Bashem El Shai gives to his servants. You see. And a part of that reward is salvation, eternal life, a new body being delivered from these evil times and destructions, man. So it's really for our benefit. But in this truth, you have to get and you have to establish your heart to know how to suffer, so to speak. And suffer means to have patience and patience ultimately goes into weight, you know, so ultimately. Learn to love delayed gratification. Because this truth is not all about, you know, quick victories, quick victories in the flesh. Okay, there's a there's a term called a pyrrhic victory, which ultimately in, in the most simplest terms I can put it, a pyrrhic victory. I believe it's spelled P Y H R R I C Pyrrhic Victory. And a pyrrhic victory ultimately is a, a, a victory or a win that you received, but you had to uh, pay great consequences to receive that win, so to speak. You know, you had to suffer a lot. You had to lose more than what you gained, pretty much. That's ultimately what a pyrrhic victory is. So you don't want to have a pyrrhic victory in the flesh. You want to have a long-term, everlasting, righteous memorial victory through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Because from us doing this work, we are going to be remembered in the sight of the Lord for our works, for our labor and love, and the Lord will recompense us. He, uh, Peter asked Yahweh Shai, you know, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have there for? You know, how should I said that we're going to every, everything we forsake, we're going to get back a hundredfold. And we were last in the society and we're going to be first in the, in the society to come, which is the kingdom of heaven and righteousness. And guess what? That society is going to last to all generations. So imagine being uh, a righteous celebrity, so to speak, in the kingdom of heaven for, for all for all generations under Yahweh Bashem El Shai, every man in his own right, rightful order. You know, unspeakable glory is laid up for us. But you have to go through the delayed gratification first. So you don't want to give up on what you want most for what you want now. Whatever it may be. You know, you might want to get a new house, get a new car, get a woman, get a, get a nice new job or whatever. And, or whatever it may be. You know, everybody has their own diverse lust. But... The thing is, the problem with a lot of Jakes is instead of waiting on the Lord to bless them with all that, experiencing the delayed gratification, experiencing the patience 
and the faith it takes to believe in the Lord's promises, which faith also takes patience as well. The scriptures speak about in Romans 8th chapter that we do with with uh, patience. Let me get it real quick. Fortification's sake. Romans 8, starting at verse 24, it says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Right. So ultimately, we, we're saved through our faith and our hope in Yahweh Basham al Shai. Faith in our works is dead, of course. So your faith is established by your works and vice versa. But nonetheless, like it says, For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? We don't see the kingdom of heaven manifested, you know, uh, and it's full in its entire fulfillment and perfection as according to the prophecies. We don't see the streets of gold yet. We don't see the, 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 the sapphires and the amethyst and the foundations being built up with precious stones. We don't see our nation ruling over these other nations right now. We don't see Yahweh Shai cracking them clouds with the chariots coming back to render vengeance upon the heathen and all the enemies of the Lord. We're not seeing that yet. Okay. Yes, we do see the spirit of the Lord playing out in, in present time. Okay. We see the prophecy being fulfilled before our eyes and we're in the, in the process of being fulfilled, but we don't necessarily see everything in its perfection just yet. But yeah, we still have hope in that. That takes faith. That also takes a form of delayed gratification, waiting your turn, so to speak. And it says, but if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? That's right. So we're supposed to patiently wait for the kingdom of heaven. We're supposed to patiently wait on Yahweh Basham El Shai. Our forefathers who were promised um, the land of Canaan, you know, the blessings the Lord was going to give us, so on and so forth. Guess what? They're still patiently waiting, man. Yeah, we did get the land of Canaan, but it got stripped from us. And you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have not have not seen the perfection of the fulfillment of the Lord's promise. But guess what? They're still patiently waiting for that. And they had faith from thousands of years ago, seeing afar off the promises of the Most High. So how much more us, man? You know, and like it says in the book of Judas, the eighth chapter, the Lord have not tried us as he tried our fathers. So... Um, you know, the stuff that our forefathers went through, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we're not getting tried like they are. Think about it. Their faith is still being tried, hypothetically speaking, because they still haven't received the fulfillment in its perfection of the Lord's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, yet they're still waiting in faith, knowing that the Lord is going to bless them for it. Okay? And through the Spirit, you know, we have to come in that same Spirit, man. Hey, does not the scripture say the children of Abraham are through faith? <laughs> and ultimately, that's that's faith in Yahweh Shmuel Shai. You know, we're we are made children of promise through the Lord's faith and believing in the Spirit. But ultimately, you know, hey, that applies to the faith as well. Psalms thirty-seven and seven: Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Yeah, don't try to take matters into your own hands. Wait on the Lord to vindicate us, avenge us, and set us up and promote us, man. Not us trying to have an inheritance hastily gotten. It says, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Right. We're not we're not going to overly worry about these devils, man. Yeah, they are living it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, as far as on this side, according to this fashion of this world, Esau, he living it up. He got it. But, you know, we don't we're not really worried about them because at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father is going to magnify us way far, way Way, way, way far above beyond Babylon ever could, man. Okay? So, you know, you just got to stay focused. Keep your eyes on the prize because it'll seem like, you know, one of the brothers was being it out from the Chicago camp. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that brother was in the Chicago camp. Um, You know, he was saying, it'll seem like the wor this world got it. And it'll seem like this world is the place to be. If you're not focused on the spirit of the Lord, you know, and that made perfect sense, man, because, you know, for the for a lot of people who fell out the faith, they fell out the faith because they missed the world. They missed 
you know, winning, quote unquote, in the world. But really, they were losing. They were just being rewarded by Satan for being wicked. And ultimately that, you know, it's all the will of the Lord, of course, but nonetheless, that's really what it is. They weren't winning. They just had an inheritance hastily gotten, man, and it wasn't blessed. Proverbs 20 and 21, an inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. That's right. Their, their inheritance is cursed. That's why it's going to be destroyed with this world and with this present society. We're not all, and this truth is not supposed to be about an inheritance hastily gotten. Oh, I got that fast money, so to speak. No, this truth is about delayed gratification, man. Patience, temperance, you know, faith, man, waiting on you, how about you, shot. Not taking matters into our own hands. Not trying to set our own selves up for, to win, but uh, sacrificing ourselves and our desire, so to speak, and our aspirations for the desires and the aspirations of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, and in return, the Lord will reward us for that. So this is a perfect precept for this quote by Richard G. Scott. Don't give up what you want most for what you want now. Right, an inheritance hastily gotten. Because the Lord, when he comes back, he's going to render every man according to his reward. And so for the people who didn't want to wait patiently for Yahweh Shai, like it says in Sirach Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 14, Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? That's right. <laughs> what you going to do in that day when your house shot fulfills his word and he pulls up? Because best believe the Lord is not a man that he shall lie. Okay? So he's going, none of his words are going to come back void. And a part of his words is for the Lord to return and to save the elect and to judge the wicked. So guess what? That will happen, whether you believe it or not. So when it does happen, okay, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So when it does happen, what are you going to do in that day when you lost patience and you wanted to fall out of the faith because you came in the spirit of saying, my Lord delayeth his coming. That's going to lead to your destruction and your demise, man. Like it says about that evil servant who said, my Lord delayeth his coming. Meaning what? That nigga lacked patience. Oh, your house shot took it too long, bro. I'm about to go back in the world. If your house shot don't come back by next year, bro, I'm I'm out this truth, bro. Well, well just go ahead, just leave now. Because it's not like you believed anyways. If you over here giving the Lord a time frame on to when he's supposed to come back according to your pleasure. Nah, bro. Okay. And that, matter of fact, let me get this real quick because this reminds me of the book of Judith too. All right, when I say two, I'm saying T-O-O. -O. Judith chapter eight, starting that verse. Um, Judith eight, starting that verse. Uh, Okay, let's start at verse, let's start at verse, um, eight, Judith eight and eight, it says, and there was none that gave her an ill word as she feared the most high greatly. And that's talking about Judith. Okay, it says verse nine, when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard all the words that Ozias had spoken unto them. And that he had sworn to deliver the city unto the Syrians after five days, right? Because when you go into the history, you read the story of Judith, what happened was Ozias was trying to tell Israel, you know, let's just wait, let's just wait it out a little longer. The Lord, he's going to help us. And then basically they came into a vow where, um, you know, Israel was like, man, if the Lord doesn't help us within five days, we're going to go to the Assyrians and we're going to su submit ourselves to the Assyrians because our, we're running out of victuals and we're hungry. So ultimately the Lord was proving Israel uh, by, by, by um, starving them out, so to speak. The Lord was proving Jake. Okay. And what ended up happening? <laughs> you know, Judith got wind of it 
and she is like I said, the evil words, man. Because why would why was it evil? Because they were trying to force the Lord's hand. And this truth, you have to always remind yourself not to force the Lord's hand, even in a time where you know you'd be like, man, it'd be really nice if the Lord come deliver me right now out of this out of this situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you have to learn not to force the Lord's hand, man. But just to have faith, going back to that delayed gratification, you know, because the Lord, like the brother Yeshua. All right, in our camp, he says this, and it always stuck with me. He's an on time God. You know, the Lord, the Most High is an on time power. You know, he comes just at the right time. He's always on time. You know, he's always on point with his timing. You see what I'm saying? Anyways, then she went, then she sent her waiting woman that had the government of all things that she had to call Ozias and Charibus and Charmus, the anxious of the city. And they came unto her, and she said unto them, Hear me now, all ye governors and the inhabitants of Bethulia, for your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right. Touching this oath which ye made are pronounced between the Most High and you. And have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, unless within these days the Lord turned to help you. And now, who are ye that have tempted the Most High this day, and stand instead of the Most High among the children of men? And now try the all, the Lord Almighty, but ye shall never know anything, for ye cannot find the depth of the heart of man. Neither can ye perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can ye search out the Most High? that hath made all these things, and know his mind, or comprehend his purpose. Nay, my brethren, provoke not the Lord our power to anger, for if he will not help us within these five days, he hath power to defend us when he will, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. That's right. So you got to always remind yourself that the Lord is omnipotent. He always has the power to deliver. Uh, up to salvation or to deliver up to destruction it says do not bind the counsels of the lord our power for the most high is not as man that he may be threatened right oh if the lord don't help us in five days i'm uh I'm, I'm i'm gonna go ahead and submit to the assyrians and you got a lot you're gonna have a lot of jakes come in the same spirit when esau comes down with that martial law and that famine hits and you know, you can't take, you can't buy or sell unless you have the karagma. You're going to have a lot of them same jakes who is rocking fringes, you know, saying Kwame Asherala. They're going to be in that same spirit <laughs> when they, when, when, when they say, oh man, man, if I, if I don't, if the Lord don't bless me with nothing to eat, man, I'm, I'm about to just go ahead and take this karagma. Right? You're going to have a lot of jakes come in that same spirit, man. Oh, best believe it. Okay, the things scripture say the things we're in the fourth time room for our learning, but that's a pure victory. Here it is. Yeah, you your quote unquote victory in the flesh was you got something to eat, right? Now you sustained in the flesh, but guess what? You lost salvation with Yahweh Bashem Shai. So you you gained a lot at a great cost of uh liability, so to speak, man. You know. Uh for instance, Esau Edom. His inheritance was hastily gotten. What did he say to Jacob? Feed me this red pottage for I am faint. And Jacob said, sell me thy birthright. And he sold his own birthright for an inheritance hastily gotten. <laughs> the food wasn't even done cooking. That's why his name was changed to Edom, red pottage. It wasn't done cooking, you know. But he sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. And you're going to have a lot of drinks coming in that same spirit, willing to sell out to the heathen. For a morsel of meat, man. Instead of, if need be, starving to death for Yahweh Hashem Shai, which the scriptures say the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, spiritually and literally. The scriptures also say that King David said, I've been old and young, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You know, so the Lord, even if you might go a couple of days without eating, guess what? The Lord ain't going to kill you by way by way of famine man the scriptures speak about how the elect shall not be ashamed in the evil time in the days of famine they shall be satisfied so if the lord proves your heart you know where you don't eat for a couple of days guess what that's a trial of your faith man you're supposed to move with faith move according to righteousness you know but a lot of dudes they're going to be proven and found out that they never really have faith in the lord to begin with and that's really the most important thing 
having faith in Yahweh Shemashah. Because when you have faith in the Lord and you know that the Lord got you in your spirit, you're not going to worry about how long. You know, you're going to know at the end of the day, the Lord got me. Of course, we want it now. Of course, we want it quickly. You know, of course, we want the Lord to make haste to destroy this place. But we know that the Lord is going to destroy this place because we believe that through faith, man. And we lean upon that. And that gives us strength at the end of the day. You know, through the spirit of power of Yahweh Shemashah. Okay, now it says, Neither is he the son of man that he should be wavering. Therefore, let us wait for salvation of him and call upon him to help us. And he will hear our voice if it please him. You see? You see? <laughs> if it please him. That's why you got to also know that the Most High ain't our genie, man. I remember one of the elders was saying this. The Most High is not our genie. You know, he doesn't grant our every wish, so to speak. He, he does according to his will. All right? All his counsel shall stand. And so the best thing to do is really to just align yourself with that will. Align yourself with that purpose. Because that purpose and that counsel is always going to prevail. So you might as well just align yourself with it. You know how people say, if you can't beat them, join them. How much more for the Heavenly Father, man? Okay? Now, um, that's the point on that. Okay? That's the point on that. Um, I'll keep reading because this is a heavy chapter. It says, for there arose none in our age, neither is there any now in these days, neither tribe nor family nor people nor city among us which worship gods made with hands, as have been aforetime, for the which cause our fathers were given to the sword and for a spoil and under great fall before our enemies. But we know none other God, therefore we trust that he will not despise us nor any of our nation. For if we be taken so, all Judea shall lie waste and our sanctuary shall be spoiled and he will require the profanation thereof at our mouth, and the slaughter of our brethren, and the captivity of the other co of the country, and the desolation of our inheritance, will he turn upon our heads among the Gentiles, wheresoever we shall be in bondage, and we shall be an offense and a reproach to all them that possess us. For our servitude shall not be directed to favor, but the Lord our power shall turn it to dishonor. That's right. Because why? Because they lacked faith. They they wanted to receive help of man. I should say, vain is the help of man. Woe unto them that seek covering, but not of me, that seek counsel, but not of me, but not of my counsel, roughly paraphrasing, that go down to Egypt for help and have not asked at my mouth. You know, so it, so by them selling out to the heathen, that's going to turn to dishonor. Same way how the scripture says in Second Ezra, all, them that, uh, all that consent unto them shall be had in derision, man. So all of our people who want to sell out to Esau, eat them in these times when it gets tough, and you can't go to the grocery store as easy as you can now. Can't go to the movies. Can't go to the restaurants like it is now because you don't got the karagma. You don't got the, uh, the, 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 the snake venom, the snake juice. Guess what, man? A lot of them are going to fold in that day, man, because it's crunch time in the spirit. And crunch time, you, in, in, in a time of crunch time, you need extreme faith, man. Okay? Pray to Yahweh Bashmash to give you faith and build up your faith, man. Okay? Now it says, now, therefore, O oh brethren, let us shew an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend upon us, and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. Right. We should be looking to shoot forth an example to the flock, man. Same way our forefathers and were willing, and our forefa our foremothers too, so to speak, because Judith was a righteous woman. And look, we're reading about her story to this very day. Her memorial was blessed. You see? I think hey, there's a few scriptures too where it talks about certain women who believed in the Lord and said they were blessed amongst women, man. Why? Because they had faith in Yahweh Shemashah. They feared Yahweh Shemashah. So their righteous uh, memorial is everlasting. Same thing with us in these times now. What we're doing now will be an everlasting memorial for us in the kingdom of heaven if we abide in good works towards Yahweh Shemashah. It says, now, therefore, brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend upon us, and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our power, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Right. You should be thankful that Yahweh is trying you. Remember what things he did to Abraham, and how he tried Isaac, and what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria, where he kept the sheep of Laban, or Laban, his mother's brother. For he have not tried us in the fire as he did them. Going back to what I was saying earlier. For the examination of their hearts, neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him, 
to admonish them. That's right. So if you want to come near unto Yahweh Hashem Shai, you got to come correct. And a part of the Lord correcting us and his admonishment is his scourging, his chastisement. And a part of a form of chastisement is what? Star <laughs> starving, so to speak. Fasting, not eating food. You know? And there's various other forms of chastisement. But chastisement ultimately is to is to bring out that righteous fruit within us, man. To make us better in the spirit. The Lord is a hard teacher. The Lord is is a tough teacher, man. He he teaches with tough love, so to speak. The Lord is also very compassionate, graceful, nurturing, tender hearted. Don't get it twisted. But he teaches with tough love at times. Because at the end of the day, the Lord wants us to shoot ourselves men. He wants us to gird up our loins and be valiant, man. Spiritually speaking, you know, you got to be, you got to be um courageous. You got to be manly in this thing, man. You got to be war ready in the spirit. So now let's, let's switch gears. I go back to Romans 8. If, unless I read all that, what I needed to read. Yeah. Okay. I'll drop Romans 8 to the spirit. Let's switch gears. Okay, and let's um, let's go ahead and touch on these precepts, man. Don't let the don't let the present of this fashion, it's like it. Don't let the present fashion of this world sift you out of the faith. That's the exhortation at hand. Okay, Hebrews eleven, starting at verse twenty four, says, "By faith, when he was come to year, by faith Moses, when he was come to years." Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh by Shemeshai than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Mashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. That's right. So ultimately, you got to come in the same spirit as Moses. He was he was willing to suffer with the people of Yahweh by Shemeshai, willing to basically go from a high estate being pharaoh's uh grandson so to speak okay that's like imagine to, to put it in an analogy in present times imagine being you know a grandson of a rothschild you know you you be gucci you don't gotta worry about nothing in this present world according to the world you got all the riches you a grandson of a rothschild that was pretty much but guess what moses gave that up Choosing rather to be lowly, to, to to be lowly, and to be righteous, man, and to be willing to suffer for Yahweh Shemel Shai. You know, esteeming the riches of Mashiach, great, you know, greater treasures, man. Okay, we got to come in that same spirit. So ultimately, what was that? That was the form of delayed gratification, man, because Moses was able to see afar off. He was able to see the reward down the line. Hebrews ten. And um, let me see. Man, yeah, what's that preset? Might be Hebrew six. Hebrews 6 and verse 10, it says, For Yahweh Shemeshah is not a righteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. That's right. So the Lord is not unrighteous to forget our works, man. He will reward us in due season. Matter of fact, let me get this one real quick. That's the thing. Jake, Jake want the Lord to work on their time. They don't want to submit themselves and work on the time of the Lord. But when you learn to submit yourself and just to align yourself with the Lord's will and his purpose, you'll realize that you are better off. Sirach so Ecclesiastes 51 and 30, it says, work your work be time, referring to working out your salvation for the Lord. It says, and in his time, he will give you your reward. That's right, man. Point blank, period. So that's the point on that right there. Patience, man. Patience, patience, patience. The scriptures say necessary patience. It, you know, when you come to seek the Lord, it's necessary patience. 
is better than he that liveth his life without a guide. Roughly paraphrasing. So Ecclesiastes 20, 20 and 32, necessary patience in seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. Right. So it's better for you to have that necessary patience in this truth than to just live your life lawlessly according to this present world and be destroyed, man. Okay, let's get the next precept. Lord willing, if the Lord allows to fly through these precepts through the spirit. This is uh, First Peter chapter two verse eleven. It says, "Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul." Right? You gotta abstain from the lusts and the fashions of this present world because that is a that is a war against your soul. That's a war against your spirit, and you can get caught up and and get choked up amongst the thorns and the cares of this world. So you gotta learn to. Have that delayed gratification, man, so that your spirit can be intact in righteousness. You don't want to get defiled with the, the, the spot and the blemish of this present world, man. Because, you know, if you get you get enticed with, with the things of this world, you get enticed with the so-called benefits of this world, so to speak. Guess what? That can sift you out the faith, man, if you're not grounded. Sirach, or is this Luke, or is Chris, uh, Slack, yeah, I'm tripping. I don't know why I keep thinking about the book of Sirach, but it's all through the Spirit, though. Call it Lord, This is Luke 21, starting at verse 34. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, all right, which means uh, excess of foods, excess of drunkenness, you know, pretty much the spirit of gluttony, man. And that's what this world teaches you. Do as thou wilt, you know. Go after your lust, you know what I'm saying? Obey your thirst, so to speak, you know? Eat all you can eat, you know? It says, lest at any times, take and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Why? Why will it come upon you unawares? Because the Lord's Holy Spirit will not be upon you to keep, of a, of a watch and a sign and a measuring of times, man. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's right. So that's the type of spirit we ought to be in, watching as well as praying, man, constantly, so that we can be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, so we don't get caught up in this present world, man. Because it is, as a, it's going to be as a snare, man. And you're not going to be able to flee the destruction. You're not going to be able to flee the judgment of the Lord. You, a lot of Jake think that, oh, when Babylon getting destroyed, I'm going to get my passport. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Jamaica. I'm going to go to Europe. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the country. Guess what, man? We left the country, so to speak. We, we're not in our homeland, Israel, but yet, guess what? We're still under these curses, man. You cannot outrun the judgment of the Lord. Scripture say, the heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool, man. <laughs> you know? So the Lord, he got dominion over all the planet earth, man. Over all the heaven. You know, King David said it, Psalms 139. Whither shall I flee from thy presence? You know, if I make my bed in hell, meaning you go underground, you try to go in a bunker, the Lord's spirit is still going to be there. His spirit of judgment is still going to be there. If you try to go up into the heavens, go up into the sky, the Lord's spirit is still going to be there. You try to go upon the sea, you know, you want to take a trip to another country, the Lord's spirit is still going to be there, man. You cannot hide yourself in secret places from the most high. As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Is uh, Jeremiah 23, 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Right. You can't hide from the Lord's judgment. You know? This is uh, Matthew 13, starting at verse 22. It says, He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. That's right. So those who get sown, those seeds that get sown amongst the thorns, 
is those who hear this word, but the, the care of this world chokes out that, that fruit that they could have had in them and they ended up being unfruitful because they got choked up amongst the thorns, man. You don't want to get choked up amongst the thorns. You don't want the, this present fashion of this world to, you know, make you get, make you become unfruitful. Okay. You want to be the seed that gets sown amongst good ground. Like it says, verse 23, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some in hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Right. Because those are the, those are the elect and the elect bring forth fruits according to their own portion. Some brothers or, you know, bring forth a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold, man. But at the end of the day, as long as you're multiplying your talents that the Lord gave you, that's all that matters. You could you could have started off with two talents, but if when the Lord comes back, you end up with four, you did what you were supposed to do, man. You're supposed to grow in this knowledge. You're not supposed to be stagnant in this truth, man. Okay, uh, Matthew 13 and 18, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hear of the word of the kingdom, understands it not. Then cometh the wicked one and catcheth the way that which is sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Right, and those are just the two-thirds, ultimately. The, the the your your average two third man, they hear this word and it doesn't apply to them, you know, it just it just goes in through one ear out the other, okay, and a lot of times too, you know, on the highways and byways, you you know, a person will be getting edified, and Satan will come up and try to throw off the edification, and a lot of times that person to get distracted through that, and they just get plucked it plucked away, you know, so that so that uh precept right there is manifold okay now it says but he that received the seed into stony places the same as he that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it yet hath he not root in himself but dureth for a while for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word by and by he is offended that's right and the lord is not dealing with individuals who are willing to go through the sufferings willing to go through the hardships for you how about willing to be proven and go through the fire and go through the trials and tribulations and to endure, man. The Lord is not dealing with an individual like that. Yeah, you might be a cheerleader. Yeah, you might say, oh, yeah, this word is beautiful. But the moment your ass start catching hell, you start to bitch up, man. The Lord ain't dealing with people like that, man. Scriptures speak about how, you know, a man that is effeminate shall not make it to the kingdom. You know? You got to be manly in this thing, man. And a part of being a man is being able to endure hardship. And most of all, taking it cheerfully, man. Scripture say, whatsoever has come upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. So we're supposed to be patient in this lower state right now because we're being tried in the fire. This is all a part of our trial, man. We are in battle on the great. This is a prison sentence we're serving right now, man. We're not meant to live it up on this side. I'm not saying that, you know, if you can't do better for yourself on this side, don't do better for yourself. But at the same time, you got to understand that this is not our rest. We don't, here we have no continuing city, as the scriptures say, but we look, but we seek for one to come. This is uh, 2 Timothy 4, starting at verse 10. It says, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed into Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus into Dalmatia. That's right. So you don't want to come in that demon spirit, man, having loved this present world and forsaken the ministry, man, because that is going to lead to destruction. All right. And, you know, this world is going to pass away, man. The fashion of this world is passing away. So why, you know, invest yourself in this place fully, man, when it's going to it's, it's, it's almost like you're trying to build up a house that's burning already. You know, oh, I want to go back in the house and put up this new picture frame I got from Home Depot. But the house is on fire, man. <laughs> you know, it don't make any sense. This is 1 Corinthians 7, starting at verse 29. But this but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passes away. Right. So all the things in this world that can, you know, distract you from serving the Lord, all that stuff soon is to pass away. They that have wives be as though they had none, man. Okay? Because you got a lot of dudes, they'll fall out in this truth about a woman. 
But guess what? The, the, the destruction of this place is so nigh at hand, it's almost as if you didn't even have that woman, man. Because the time is short, man. Okay, and, also, and as well, on another manifold way to break the precept down, brothers who are truly invested in this thing barely even got time for their woman, barely even got time for their children. You know, barely even got time for their family, so to speak. Brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, because they're truly invested in this work. Okay? You know, like it says, I love the part where it says, they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that wept as though they wept not. Because right now we're sighing and crying, but soon to come, man, you know, our joys, our mourning is going to be turned into joy, man. But the world's joy is going to be turned into sorrow. The worlds are going to flip, and they're going to flip quickly. It's almost as if we didn't even weep, man, because we, this world is hasting away by quickly. The fashion of this world passed away. So you don't want to abuse this world. You use this world. You get what you can get out of this world, and you, you get out. Don't don't get abused. Don't get sucked into this world. Like that movie Spider-Man 3, <laughs> when, um, when Spider-Man was in the black suit, the Venom suit, okay, Eventually, he knew in his character, he knew in his spirit that that suit was no good for him. So he technically, used, by in, a, in an analogy, he used the world because he used the suit to, you know, do everything he did and to gain clout or whatever. He used the suit and he felt the power of it, but he didn't abuse it because eventually he pulled the suit off and then the suit ended up falling on Brock. That venom ended up falling on Brock, but Brock got consumed into it okay or eddie brock I, I believe his name's eddie brock or eddie let's just say his name's eddie eddie got consumed into that suit he got consumed into venom to where when spider-man pulled him out of it he, and and try to throw a grenade to blow venom up because venom gets destroyed by fire or loud noises okay he, this nigga eddie ran back into venom while it was exploding man and died he died with it so, you know, you get consumed into this world, you're going to die with it, man. Straight up. All right, this is 2nd Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. It says, Then answered he me and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel, for the world hasteth fast to pass away. That's right. This world hasteth fast to pass away. So why invest yourself in this place that's going to pass away, man? It doesn't make any sense. This is First John chapter 2, starting at verse 15. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. Right. It didn't say he that doeth his own will. It said he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. So like I said, it was earlier through the Spirit, it's best to align yourself with the purpose and the will of Yahweh Bashem El Shai because that is going to abide forever, man. But if you want to align yourself with this world, it's going to pass away. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. The Lord's word will not return unto him void. He will accomplish everything he spoke. This is Isaiah 51, starting at verse 4. It says, Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The isle shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. And that's also we go into our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay? We're going to trust in the Lord's holy arm. Yahweh Shai is sitting at the right hand of the Most High. He represents the Most High's right hand. Okay? Yahweh Shai, he the true Ban Yam Yam, you know, son of the right. Okay? But nonetheless, you know, a little spiritual joke. <laughs> Brother Yashai said that. It's funny. But nonetheless, what did the Lord say? His righteousness is near, man. His righteousness is near. It is at hand. Okay? And we see a form of that now through this word, through this ministry, man. You're seeing the Lord's righteousness being near unto us. Soon it's to manifest. 
you know, the prophecies. Prophecies will be fulfilled. Verse 6, it says, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look up and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke because of the missiles and the earth shall wax old like a garment. This world is going to be corrupted and be destroyed. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner, right? So if you want to dwell and be earthly and be worldly and be joined to this world, you are going to die with this world. Same way Eddie Brock died with the venom in Spider-Man 3. Okay, it says, But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Right, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5 says, or what one in fifteen, it says righteousness is immortal, man. So if you come in the spirit of the Lord's righteousness, what do you think that's going to lead to? Immortality. Wisdom of Solomon one in fifteen. For righteousness is immortal. You see. So if you are aligning yourself in the image and in the will of Yahweh Bashemashai, that's going to lead to everlasting righteous immortality for you. But if you want to cleave to this world. You're going to be destroyed with it. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 23, it says, For the Most High created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. So you're going to find death and destruction if you want to hold on the side of evil, man. But if you hold on to the side of righteousness, that will lead unto eternal life, man. Okay, this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 6, starting at verse 17. For the very true beginning of her, referring to wisdom, is the desire of discipline, right? That delayed gratification. And the care of discipline is love. Love is keeping the commandments. It says, and love is the keeping of her laws. So if you love the Lord, you're going to keep his laws to the best of your abilities. Not saying we're going to be justified by the law. Not saying we're going to be saved by the law. Because we're justified and saved through the grace of Yahweh Shai, the mercy of the Lord, and the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. But that doesn't mean that you just be negligent and try not to keep the law to the best of your ability. And where you fall short, that's where Yahweh Shai's sacrifice comes into play, man. It says, in loving of her, uh, and it says, in love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto the Most High. That's right. So if you take heed to the ways of Yahweh Shemashai, that's going to lead to incorruption, and incorruption is going to lead to you drawing nearer to the Lord. It says, and therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. That's right. So incorruption ultimately means not breaking down. You know, you don't get corrupted. So that's, in, in a sense, what is that? Immortality, man. Woo! Was what Psalm 8, starting at verse 13. It says, Moreover, by the means of her, I shall obtain immortality. <laughs> so, by means of cleaving unto the wisdom of the Lord, that's going to lead to you having immortality and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. That's right. Going back to what I was saying earlier through the Spirit, that memorial, man. And look, we're still reading about Solomon's memorial to this very day, which is our Lord Yahweh Shah in the reincarnation, if you can receive it. So, how much more? our everlasting memorial that's going to be written for us in the kingdom of heaven for how we conduct ourselves right now. You know? So, hey, you know, something to ponder on through the spirit. You know, so point being, don't give up what you want most for what you want now. You know, Lord willing, this video is edifying. I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, El Shai Bashem, HaKadosh, Double Honors. To the elders and apostles of great most never well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all.